Honeywell from local radio, late night shows, The View, hit podcasts like Call Her Daddy. Kamala Harris is everywhere in these final weeks before Americans head to the polls. So let's kick off this show. What do we make of Kamala hitting up these media outlets? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. We like it. Yeah, it's not surprising. I think we've seen this done time and time again. We remember when Donald Trump was running first time around, he showed up on everything from Jimmy Fallon you know, and beyond, and he is doing his own circuit. So it's not surprising that Kamala is trying to find or speak to her audience. What I did find interesting was the Call Her Daddy podcast. Mm. Now, this is a podcast, if you know, it's been around for quite a few years. It has a massive following among females of a particular age group, but actually- Her quite, age, I Your think. age. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yeah. And then also, I think a, a, a range of political affiliations there. Um, it is a podcast where they, where they talk a lot about sex, or she talks mm -hmm. a lot about sex. And so it's quite a racy podcast. So it's an interesting choice, but the thing is we can't forget that one of the center pieces of this particular election, one of many, is the abortion issue. Mm -hmm. And Kamala is really leaning into that audience because it is it is the, one of the strongest pieces, I think, of her election platform, or clearest where she stands, and it is one of Donald Trump's weakest points. Mm -hmm. And we know that among majority of Americans, this is an important issue. And uh, so I think that it's a really important and, and selective choice. I'll just reflect on, though, that, that it is surprising that we've come so far, like as somebody who works on a lot of shows about sexuality, for years we were always told, no celebrity's gonna go on your show and talk about sex and whatever. Yeah. And now she's and just now, like, now the yeah. vice president is there. So what a world, <laughs> what a world we're yeah. living in. Well, I want to piggyback on that because I do think a lot of people think of Call Her Daddy as a sex podcast. And I get it. Like if you look at the image that Here's the podcast image. Yeah. This, oh, yeah. This isn't the tr what a traditional political correspondent looks like. <laughs> Not. Right? Oh. But I think we're in a year where we know that women can be many things. That's right. Right? That is correct. <laughs> you, can, you can talk about politics yeah. Yeah. and women's reproductive rights and sex. Yeah. And actually, this podcast started out as kind of a one-line podcast all about sex. And it has since evolved yeah. into a space where there is lots of chat about women's issues. Jane Fonda called Alex Cooper one of the best interviewers she's ever oh had. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which is pretty remarkable. And I will admit that I've not uh, listened to this podcast because of appearances. <coughs> so this is very interesting. And yeah. I don't think you're alone in that. I don't yeah. think you're alone in that. And I also, like, when you, when you talk about the leanings, the political leanings of the podcast, I found this from NPR really interesting. 44% of her listeners are either Republican or independent. Oh, interesting. Mm. Meaning that Kamala's team, quite savvily, knew that they could win over 44% of listeners who are potentially undecided. Yeah. So I just think it was a really savvy play, and people people underestimate this podcast for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is. I, I agree that it is savvy, and a recent poll suggests that almost 40% of U.S. voters avoid news. <laughs> <laughs> so much <laughs> and more than half say that when they do get news it's via social media so going to these some might call them unconventional like these late night shows and multiple podcasts she's on a sports podcast yeah smart list with our pals that we listen to jason yeah. bateman etc and call your daddy like those might be considered call her, call her daddy. daddy call her <laughs> daddy <laughs> not your daddy <laughs> show me your age without telling me <laughs> So I do think it makes sense, but I do think, take me seriously, stop just looking at how beautiful I am. Uh, I thought to my head. But I do think it could be risky. All of those, if we know anything about these late night talk shows, um, they get clipped. They get clipped and they get, the people she might be trying to appeal to, which are younger people, I don't know if they're tuning in to watch those shows. They're tuning into social media to watch the clips. And the danger with clips is they get truncated. Mm -hmm. And it is risky in that sense, because we talk about this all the time, these stories where listen to the whole thing, yeah. read the whole thing. Don't, don't pull it out of context. Don't out of context. Yeah. So it is a little risky. Yeah. I, I don't think it's risky at all. I don't think there's nothing, anything surprising about this. To me, from the very beginning, if you look at her social media, they are taking a page straight out of the Obama 2008 playbook, yeah. which is get the young vote. We all know that in the United States, uh, it seems like whoever you're going to vote for is probably who you're going to vote for, but who they're still underestimating consistently is the youth vote. There are 40 million... <laughs> um, 
You're not going to change. You're probably not going to change a Republican's mind, and you're probably not going to change a Democrat's mind. But you have 40 million brand new Ooh, Gen Z voters yeah. this election. 40 million, and a lot of them are very disenfranchised and couldn't care less about politics. But where are they? They're on social media. So I saw this happen as soon as Kamala announced. The veteran OGs of Obama's 2008 campaign came rushing into her campaign. They are running her campaign, including a guy by the name of David Ploof. Cool last name. Who is this guy? <laughs> he is the chief strategist for Kamala Harris, who just left his job at TikTok. And oh. so when I look at the strategy of how do you get the young people, it is in the memes. It is yeah. in the clips. Her, her Instagram and her TikTok is fire. Am I right, the young girl in the front? Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> so what I'm saying is... This election is only going to be decided, they say, by about 200,000 voters, probably in the northwest of America. Wow. Everyone's minds are made except for that small group of people. But you know who those people have? They probably have a young daughter at home. And you know who's going to help influence mom or dad to make a vote? Maybe they didn't even want to vote, but they might now. Mm -hmm. That young daughter. Yeah. So get the youth mm -hmm. vote. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, you. Come a bit closer. We've got so many more must-see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below and don't miss out.